MMORPGs have had a rough couple of decades. So when I say there is an MMO in the works that has, after all of this heartbreak, piqued my interest and more importantly made me excited for a new release in this genre, you can trust me when I say the hype is real. I am of course talking about the Riot Games MMORPG set in the League of Legends universe of Runeterra. The League of Legends universe has been exploding over the last few years, with Riot adding auto battlers, card games, adventure games, fighting games, and even assisting indie devs with the creation of some lovable titles like Mage Seeker, Song of Nunu, or the highly anticipated upcoming Bandletale. It's no surprise that Riot Games is setting sail to take over the gaming industry with a huge, massively multiplayer online role-playing game. But with such an exciting new title in the works, many questions may arise. What will the combat be like? Like, is, is it a WoW clone? Is it going to be canon to the Runeterra world? Or will there be Poros? In this video, I plan to answer all of these questions and maybe even some you didn't know that you had in the first place. So buckle in, hit that subscribe button, and let's take a look at everything we know about the future Riot Games MMORPG. Oh, and uh, did I mention everything in this video can change? So take it with a grain of salt and let's just have some fun with it. Back in 2019, League of Legends co-founder and MMORPG enthusiast teased on Twitter if Riot Games should make an MMORPG set in the Runeterra universe. Then, nearly an entire year later, Greg Ghostcrawler Street officially announced they were in the process of building an MMORPG on Twitter again. What we didn't know at this time is that Riot Games had in fact hired many talented devs as far back as 2016 to start working on MMO research and development. Needless to say, it seems Riot Games has had the intentions of creating an MMO for quite some time now and have been waiting for the right time and likely, more importantly, the right gameplay to announce it to the public. It's been a little over three years now since that official announcement on Twitter by Greg Street, and things have changed since then. The team at Riot Games has been hard at work developing what is arguably the largest game to ever hit the MMO space. That said, we have seen some speed bumps along the way, which I promise you are quite normal to game development. Likely the largest of these changes we have seen was the departure of executive producer Greg Street. And while his departure may be highly controversial and something I have gone over in greater depth on my 2023 Riot MMO news video, I want to focus more on the future and the amazing replacement we got for the executive producer role. I am of course talking about VJ Tucker. VJ's gaming career as well as his MMORPG pedigree starts all the way back in 2004 on the critically acclaimed sandbox MMORPG set in the Star Wars universe, Star Wars Galaxies. If you're interested in hearing more about VJ, I urge you to check out my video where I go over all of his experience in much greater detail. This video and many more will be linked down in the description below. And now that we've gone over kind of the history of the project, the announcement, and some of the changes in the lineup, let's dive head first into the exciting world, how we may interact through dungeons, raids, PvP, classes, and more. All of which I will support with quotes from the team themselves at Riot Games. Riot has been hard at work developing the world of Runeterra through its flagship title, League of Legends. From the frozen peaks of the Freljord to the shores of Bilgewater, the world of Runeterra truly has something for everyone. In fact, there are 13 named areas Riot picks champions from for their flagship title. I think it is safe to say we will likely see these same regions selected for the MMO. Whether Riot Games decides to start with only some of these regions is yet to be seen, though the MMO's executive producer did have this to say on the topic during an interview with lore master Necrit. The most important things for us is to realize the world of Runeterra that exists in our players' hearts. We're, we are those people. Like we, we want to be in the world and we want to see it and we want to experience it. The, the path for this MMO in the long term will have that full world of Runeterra realized. So right. for us, it's just a question of how we get there, what the steps are, whether we start small, whether we start broad. Um, we, we have some takes about where we want to go, but we have our North Star of like, that full version of Runeterra, and we know we're going to get there. So it's just, it's just a question of the steps along the way. <laughs> League of Legends boasts 6 main class archetypes and 11 subclasses in its arsenal. To any fan of MMOs, many of these names may sound familiar. We have tanks, mages, assassins, and even some more original ones such as vanguards or skirmishers. If Riot simply makes use of the 6 main classes, 
fighter, mage, marksman, slayer, tank, and enchanter, then I think we are pretty set for any modern day MMORPG. When asked about the classes that we may potentially see in the MMORPG, ex-executive producer Ghostcrawler had this to say during his interview with Canon. Look at the kind of champions we have and you can think about right. what kind of classes you might turn those into. All right, so before we jump into the raids, dungeons, and PvP, let's take a brief moment to talk about the combat and what it may look like. I don't know about you, but looking at other Riot Games titles, I can pretty confidently say that they are uniquely qualified to produce some cutting edge MMORPG combat. But don't take my word for it. This snippet from one of their MMO job postings from this year sums up what their philosophy is for the MMO and its combat. We're on a mission to deliver a game that players have been yearning for, an MMO set in the League universe. We aspire to provide a generational leap in the genre that satisfies old fans and newcomers alike. A key ingredient to our success is delivering cutting-edge action combat that is immediately satisfying and remains engaging for thousands of hours of play. So I think it's safe to say they are aiming for action combat, but will it be top-down similar to League or have a different camera perspective? Well, this doesn't fully confirm the camera perspective, I think this quote from this same job listing really says a lot. Direct experience across both third person action and MMO genres. So sure, like I said earlier, take it with a grain of salt maybe, but I think it's safe to assume for now that the right MMO will be third person action combat. While there's not much to say currently about the raids and dungeons besides the fact that Riot has hired some encounter designers from the hit MMORPG World of Warcraft, I think it is safe to say we will see them. But in what capacity, and I guess more importantly, what champions we will be killing for that sweet, sweet loot, it's kind of yet to be seen. All right, so here's a spicy one that everyone seems to have an opinion on and just know better than everyone else. MMORPG monetization. First off, I highly, highly doubt there will be a subscription. In fact, I think it is safe to say that given Riot's history, the game will be as free as hitting that subscribe button on this video. That said, Riot has mastered the games as a service payment model, and I would make the assumption that they will continue this into the MMO. How they choose to monetize will most likely mirror some of their other games, either through a non-pay-to-win cash shop, cosmetics, season passes, or most likely a combination of all of these. They have stated that they want this to be a game you can jump into and play, but take some time off to play other games. Just this statement alone really makes me think that a subscription model is just off the table. Telegraphing and hand-holding mechanics in MMORPGs has really become modern place, something we really started to see a lot of all the way back in June of 2014 with the release of the MMORPG Wildstar, though we have seen it in other games previously. Mark Yetter, the game director of the MMO, stated that he doesn't want the game to be too hand-holding and dumbed down for its player base. Expect less telegraphing and more looking for animation in the game mechanics. A good example of this is when you're fighting the big bad boss and he puts up his right hand, you need to move away from that right hand because you know it's going to be coming slamming down in any second. This is something we've seen in Souls-like bosses in Elden Ring, Dark Souls, Sekiro, those kind of games. While it's far too early to give specifications, the team has said, in general, you want a game that can let people show off their high-end graphics cards while also not eliminating the sizable chunk of players who want to play but cannot afford an expensive rig. So I think it's safe to say that you chads with 4090s who spend all your money on your gaming equipment, you'll get a good looking game. But for those of us who are playing on toasters, it'll still be playable as well. When talking about the Holy Trinity, the ex-executive producer had this to say. There are games that take on the challenge of no Holy Trinity, but that usually ends up becoming a major design focus, which often means you are not innovating on something else. The Holy Trinity does mostly work, not to mention there are lots of people who want to be healers or tanks. While some future MMO titles are ran with complete transparency, some others, like the Riot MMO, require a little more digging. And through all this digging, there is one recurring theme I find, and that's that Riot Games is looking to build a highly accessible MMORPG to bring newer and older generations together in this 
beautiful world of Runeterra. They're not looking to build a niche product that appeals to only a very small subsect of 30-year-old balding gamers, and instead bring in the next generation of MMORPG players while also including us old dudes as well. Whether they plan to do this through a game that can be played on a toaster, simplified gameplay, modern systems, or by simply respecting the players, we are yet to see. But I am very excited to hear more about this project in the future, and I think we're coming up on some pretty big landmarks that may provide us with some information. And there you have it, the up-to-date 2024 list of all things currently known or probably more accurately unknown about the Riot MMO. I cannot wait to see what Riot has cooking for us this year. We have the 2024 League season coming out this month, Arcane Season 2 at the end of the year, and the 15th anniversary for League of Legends. 2024 is sure to hold some surprises for us all, so if you're interested in staying up to date on all things Riot MMO and MMORPG gaming in general, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on the video. And if you really feel like sliding down the rabbit hole, come hang out with me and my awesome community over in Twitch chat or the Copium support group that is now known as the Oh Hey Spun Community Discord. As always, if you made it this far, thank you so much. 2024 is going to be an amazing year for us all, Riot fans, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Peace.